I hadn't expected to be doing a post, but I just saw something and I'm just like face palm. Seriously. Christia Freeland at the UN Security Council says the gravest threat today is white supremacist terrorism and Islamophobia. This is the greatest threat facing the world today, according to her. I'm wondering to myself, and forgive me if I sound sarcastic because I'm being, is it a requirement that before you join the Liberal Party or to get into the Liberal Caucus, you must be functionally brain dead? I mean, they are, what, six months away from a federal election? Instead of trying to read the temper of the Canadian people, instead of trying to overturn some of the harm they've done, uh, I mean, other than the blatant vote buying, the, the bribe to the media, $600 million, the bribe to the media, other than things like that and claiming that they're going to do things in the budget, um, they're relying heavily on the immigrant vote. They let these people in. They're trying to stop. You don't even have to be a Canadian citizen to vote. Really? Really? People like me and the hundreds of thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of Canadians who earn the right to vote, who have their citizenship either by birth or by the dint of their own efforts. And he's going to give it to the immigrant population like a built-in voting block. Well, I mean, his father did the same thing with more class and more subtlety, but exactly the same thing, buying votes. So instead of attempting to placate or at least mitigate some of the damage they've done, placate the, the Canadian population, they, no, they have a new strategy. They are going to double down on stupid. Like that statement, double down on stupid. And I'm just like, Ms. Freeland, really, what color is the sky in Freeland land? Because, man, oh man, oh man, that's not the world I live in. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm awestruck. I really am gobsmacked that what is what are supposed to be university educated, one would assume intelligent people to some degree could be that totally, absolutely, 100% disconnected from Canadian reality and world reality. And I'm just like, wow, seriously. I really don't. I cannot wrap my head around it. I mean, Trudeau with that, uh, okay, we all know what he is, but that snarky comment to that Aboriginal woman when she was escorted out because she made him uncomfortable with the question, and that smirky, thank you for your donation. Oh, God, God like, really? It's just like, here, I shot myself in one foot. Why don't I shoot myself in the other foot? And then I'll open my mouth and just change feet. He just cannot seem to stop himself. Like, where's his handlers? Like, where's the people who are pulling the strings and feeding him lines? Do you not understand? You cannot let this moron ad lib. He is just keeps sinking the party down and down. If it won't happen, unfortunately, but it is my dream, my absolute dream. Oh, dear God in heaven. Um, to see the federal liberals go the way of the Ontario liberals. Anybody who followed the Ontario election, the liberals did not even get enough seats to get party status. When I heard that, I almost died. I, I was ecstatic. If ever there was an, a resounding voice of the Canadian people speaking, the people of Ontario speaking out, about the way they felt about that that abysmal excuse for a monstrously inept and massively egalit, uh, elitist party, that was it. I would love to see that happen federally. It won't. There are too many people. We've always voted liberal. I went on about that before. It's just like this 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 brain dead mantra that seems to just defy anything resembling logic or common sense. You can't talk to these people, zealots and uh, fanatics. You can't reason with them. You can't talk to them. Antifa, you can't talk to them. People who are a hardcore liberal, you can't talk to them. Everything is Harper's fault, or you're a racist. Oh my God. Or a white supremacist, or an Islamophobe, or something just uh, demonize you, buzzword you. They have to do this so they can dismiss you. Otherwise, if you say anything that's intelligent, logical, and factual, and they don't like it, 
then they have to demonize you so they can dismiss you. Oh, my God, my God, my God. So, back to Christia Freeland, that the white supremacists and the Islamophobes pose the greatest threat, that terrorism, white supremacist terrorism. Um, okay, maybe I'm misinformed, and if anybody knows better, please feel free to chime in. I'd love to know where my information is incorrect, okay? 12 Catholic churches in Paris, bombed and desecrated, burned and desecrated with feces, things like that. I wonder who did that. Uh, probably some Islamophobe did it to pin it on the poor innocent Muslims, who of course would have nothing to do with such things, right? Um, that's the way it'll probably get spun. Over probably four or five hundred Christians now murdered between Nigeria, Egypt, Kenya, what, 142 in Kenya alone, churches burned and priests and congregants murdered in the Philippines, the Catholics, by Muslims. Christ Church massacre, they killed, what, 40 and wounded another 50 or something? And he's not a white supremacist. You read it. He was an anarchist. He's a fruitcake. You read his manifesto. It's this rambling dissertation that makes absolutely well written. But the guy's just a total freaking wingnut. He's not left. He's not right. He calls himself an anarchist and an eco warrior. And there's no, you can't pin this guy down. But because he's Caucasian, he's obviously a white supremacist, right? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Just like every black person is a gangbanger, right? Oh, Jesus. But it's this this quick, easy pigeonholing. But back to my thread. Church is being burned, but it's all these all these attacks on Christians carried out by Muslims. Oh, that's not a problem. No, that's just what? An expression of religious freedom? You know, uh, I don't know. How do you justify that? How do you justify not speaking out against this? You're outraged. Every atrocity is an outrage. Every atrocity deserves to be shouted from the rooftops. Nope. I don't know, people. I really don't. And that the liberal government should be so complicit in the silence surrounding this. I've said it in other posts. I understand the mindset. These freaking morons. We don't want to feed Islamophobia. Like in their warped and twisted view of Canada and Canadians, we are all going to rise up, all Caucasian uh, Canadians are going to rise up, and even good Canadians of color are going to rise up and start slaughtering Muslims in the street. This is, seems to be their mindset, that if they give us information about Muslim atrocities, we're all going to turn into a bunch of ravening, murderous, white supremacist, yeah, yeah, Klansmen. Really? I don't know about you, and I own firearms, but I don't feel the need to go out and massacre a bunch of Muslims in retaliation for the burned churches in Paris or the dead Christians or the Dan Forth shooter. I don't know of any one person who feels the same way about all Muslims. Radical Islam in a heartbeat. I've gone on about that. I won't go on about that again. You come to my country to, to alter the fabric? Why did you come here? If you don't like it here, go. Leave. Please feel free. Christia Freeland, Trudeau's cabinet. Bill Blair, my God, I actually feel sorry for Bill Blair. You know that? It's, uh, I see this guy was at one point, he was a dedicated police officer. Okay, he turned into a politician. He was, uh, he started buying into the whole political matrix, but at one point, he actually was a police officer. Uh, patrolled the streets, kept the citizenry safe, and for that past service, I don't think his present stupidity wipes out what he's done in the past. It mitigates it definitely, but I don't think it wipes it out. So, you see the look in his eyes? He knows he's between a rock and a hard place. He's pushing bullshit. He knows he's pushing pushing bullshit, but that's his rice bowl, man. That's his, that's his paycheck. 
That's what he was hired for, and like a good little soldier, he's going to push this whole bullshit disarmament agenda and try to make palatable uh, something that is absolutely ridiculous. The firearms laws, I've gone on about that too. What haven't I done a post on it? But uh, things will come up. And it's just like, my God, once again, all I can say is, my poor Canada, my poor country. Oh, Jesus wept. Well, like, as I said, we're six months away from an election. In October, the Canadians will have the chance to throw these people out. And oh, dear God, please, please, please. Even, I, I mentioned again <laughs> in a previous post, don't waste your vote. If you don't want to vote for the Conservatives, vote Libertarian. Vote Green Party. Vote the Rhinoceros Party. Vote somebody who hasn't got a hope in hell of forming a government. If you plan to vote Liberal, vote for someone else. Allow the Conservatives to get their majority. Andrew Scheer, like I said, is he perhaps colorless? I don't think he's a very sparky speaker. I'd like to see a little more passion out of him. But Harper was not a passionate or demonstrative man. And look how look at how steadily, quietly, steadily he governed this country. Sure, he made mistakes. Every politician makes mistakes. I, I have a personal opinion. I know that no politician is going to be perfect. This is just... If you want perfection, die and go to heaven, okay? Or if you're Muslim, die and go to paradise. There you're going to get perfection. Here, not so much. Who's going to do, who's going to be the least damaging leader to Canada? Like, I actually feel sorry for Sheer, just like I do for Ford. Ford, people are already screaming at uh, Premier Doug Ford because they're not getting this and they're not getting that. My God, people... He has got to try to repair 16 years, 16 years of liberal mismanagement. And he's, what, two, three years into his mandate? And he's, you tell me how you overturned 16 years of, of absolutely moronic mismanagement back and get us back to where we are. He's, he's pushing for it. But what a daunting task. I've always wondered if Tim Hudak didn't deliberately blow his chance to govern Ontario because he had the election and he blew it when he said he was going to cut the civil service jobs. And even his handlers apparently had no idea that this was coming. This just came out of him. Did he do this deliberately? Did he deliberately throw the election because he started to actually think coldly and logically about the task that was facing him and just said, I don't want to do this, folks. And I will, I, if that was the case, if that was the case, I don't blame him one little bit. My God, I, if anything, it increases my admiration for Doug Ford that he would have the sheer absolute guts to take on that task. Well, Sheer has got four years of mismanagement. Harper left a good economy, which Trudeau has effectively destroyed. So Andrew Scheer has got four years of liberal mismanagement to overturn, to build bridges with our, with our international neighbors, to build bridges with Alberta, a big one there, to build bridges to try to start reuniting Canada. I would ask, if I had any say in it, the Ministry of Multiculturalism is gone. The concept of multiculturalism is gone. Ethnic communities, maintain pride in your ethnicity, have your festivals, uh, the Greek, uh, the Danforth, um, the Danforth Fair, the Greek festival, Chinese New Year, the festivals, the Ukrainian and Polish street festivals, have your festivals, but no more government mandated hyphenated Canadianism. My, my ancestry was Ukrainian. I am not a Ukrainian Canadian. I am a Canadian. End of story. My loyalty is to Canada. My primary love is for Canada. I weep over what's going on in the Ukraine. It's terrible what Russia's doing again. But uh, at the end of the day, my primary loyalty is to Canada. And my efforts are going to be put towards seeing a better Canada 
I'm on the down, I'm on the back end of my life. What have I got to lose now? I'm a pensioner, right? So I just live. My pension comes in. I'd like to see it increase. That's one of the things Shearer should do. I mean, you work for 47 fucking years. You'd think you'd get a little more than uh, 1600 a month. But compared to what the refugees are getting, that's the other thing that's really frosting me. The amount of money, and it's all there. Anybody who wants to check the amount of money that Trudeau is flinging out of the country, frittering away. Canadian taxpayers' dollars that should be staying in this country and benefiting the people of Canada. The veterans, how shamefully they're treated. The military, once again, fucked by the Liberal government, which they always have. What's in the budget for the military? <laughs> Take a look at that. The Liberals are just a disaster for Canada. The Liberal Party of today is not the Liberal Party of my youth. I don't know where these moronic elitist monsters come from. But as far as I'm concerned, the whole lot of them, I'd put them all against a wall and shoot them. They're just a bunch of trees. Well, I don't know. Can you shoot somebody for being stupid? If it was deliberately cold-blooded, nasty, treasonous behavior, yeah, okay. But uh, I, I, I rescind that. I wouldn't put them against a wall and shoot them. I would ship them all to Greenland. Here you go, building materials. Now, there's real world, survive or not. But just get them out of this country. Honest to God, people, people, six months, six months. I've always said if I was in charge of foreign aid, no, foreign policy, I would not send out one penny of Canadian money, not one cent. I would ask these people, you want money? What do you want it for? Oh, you need farming equipment. We have farming equipment. We'll send you farming equipment. Oh, you need schools to build? Oh, we'll hire staff and send you ship. We have building material. We'll send you building material and trained staff, carpenters to assist the locals, trained uh, building tradesmen, electricians, plumbers, carpenters. What do you need the money for? And then give them the goods. And where? actual money was needed because it was locally sourced product, there would be a Canadian administrator approving where the money went. There would be no more, oh, here you go. Here's $160 million of Canadian taxpayers' money. Burkina Faso? Seriously? That's my idea. Simplistically, of course, it would need fleshing out simplistically, but that's what I would be doing if I had any say at all in, in foreign aid. Demonstrate your need and tell us what you need. If we can provide it for you, we will. And if we're going to give you the cash to source it locally, it will be administered by a Canadian government official with his loyalty to Canada, not to your country. Oh, well, back to the Muslims. I strayed there. I believe it was Libya, one of the most absolutely disgusting demonstrations of Muslim idiocy was a bunch of prancing, jabbering monkeys defacing a Commonwealth war grave, war cemetery, knocking the crosses off, firing their AKs in the air. Why were they armed? Did they think these corpses were going to rise up and uh, the spirits of the dead were going to come and attack them for defacing the cemetery? All the time screaming, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, while they're blasting away and defacing the cemeteries of these valiant and gallant soldiers who died to keep them free. So there's an example of the mindset. But of course, I'm a white supremacist, so you just can't take that. I don't know if you remember, any of you, there was a Christian fundamentalist in the States burned a copy of the Koran. Well... The backlash internationally from the Muslims, the radical Muslims, the backlash, the screaming. And I think he did, yeah, deliberately provocative. You're going to damage symbols of Christianity? There's your burning Koran. Fuck you. I, love, I loved him for that. I wouldn't have personally have inflamed him like that, but I understand why he did it. And actually, I approve. You know, you will deride, there is no religion but Islam. Uh, you deride every other religion uh, and see that Islam is the only religion, as far as you're concerned, the deen, the natural religion of Canada, that 
uh, the Muslim Party of Canada or something, that new one that's come up. And you know some idiot's going to vote for him, some freaking Trinity Bellwood snowflake from downtown Toronto. Joe Cressy would probably. He's that stupid. <sighs> so anyways, there's my ramble. So if you are Caucasian um, or you have any critiques of Islam, according to Christian Freeland, you're a potential terrorist and you should go on a watch list. How does it feel that as a good Canadian, you're now all of a sudden a potential terrorist? Well, Ms. Freeland, go suck shit through a funnel, as we used to say in the military. Have a good day, my fellow Canadians.